Warning, I am not a professional. This is just a hobby of mine, and then from time to time, I get distracted and do stupid things like cutting my finger off. Please don't do that. That really effing hurt. Hi. On today's episode of What Am I Gonna Destroy? This was just sitting over here on the desk in a bag and can't remember what I had over there. Obviously nothing important, but uh, 67 Chevelle. And this is all the parts I have. That's it. It's a pro straight. Nice and tubbed. That's it for the chrome parts. Steering wheels broke. No tires, no motor. I do got the glass, but you can always make your own glass. Got the insides of the doors. No back seat put that in that'll be pretty cool firewall the hood a little bit of the suspension a arms sway bar probably not going to use any of that because there's a radiator oh, that'll be cool because i got an idea on this one so sure you know you already seen where i'm going with this because of the thumbnail and the picture so you know we're just trying to make it entertaining okay come on i still don't know what i'm doing with this yet but yeah just to, just watch the video so I've been wanting to do a how-to, and I know I have another one up here, but of how I do the crashed vehicles. I did one of a Torino a while back, and that video was actually way before I started doing editing or even thinking about doing the video editing. I just uploaded the video, and that was it. Like, there's nothing on it, but it does have, like, 2,400 views, which is actually kind of crazy to me, but... um. So I know if I ended up doing a good video, then this is probably going to get a lot more views. So, and that's what I kind of need right now. So I'm trying to build my channel, okay? Jeez, that's why I'm doing so much. No, but seriously though, I love the comments. The people that are saying, you know, I love your videos. You and your wife's awesome. Your guys are funny. You make it entertaining. You know, that, I don't make it, I never wanted to make a boring video. I wanted to make it entertaining, and that's why it took me so long to figure out what to do. And I'll do another video of, like, who my biggest, like, what, not really influencer, but, like, what really got my mind rolling on, like, what I wanted to do with the videos. And I will do another video of that later but not right now i'm trying to do something okay jeez anyways i'm gonna make this crash like make it look like it was on the strip and it hit the wall and it just took a bunch of parts out because there's a bunch of stuff missing here motor tires gone front seats are gone steering wheels cracked just a lot of stuff is missing out of this kit, but that's fine. It's all fine. Because that would be a, this is the perfect donor car for what I want to do this video on. So, here we go. All right. So, first thing first. <clears throat> I use my 3000 
grip pad. Saying all the sheen off shininess. You know, make it so the stuff will stick to it. I did two of these cars before. I'm in the middle of doing another one that's a roll, or actually two more that's a rollover, and they're I have pictures on my Facebook. Nothing really nothing on YouTube. Um I the one that there's two that I've completed, the Torino and then the Nova. The Nova got just an absurd amount of views. The Torino was right up there too. Uh the Torino was rear ended, the Nova had a front end collision. And I'm going to put a shout out there to somebody that inspired me to do more of the dented stuff. And that's Troy Deal. You're freaking awesome. Badass at what you do. Absolutely awesome at what you do. He's been in magazines, has a, they, did an article on him in a scale auto magazine and he he uses aluminum foil and uh try to teach me how to do that i can't figure that out i i i tried and but he's been doing it for so long that he's just perfected the way he does it and it's absolutely amazing me not so much i could not do that so I came up with something else in the HVAC tape. You've seen it in other videos, but he got me started on that. And the HVAC, HVAC tape was my idea. And I've, I've never seen anybody else actually do it. Um, I did get a couple other people on that and they've learned from me. Um, I kind of taught myself how to do that. I just had an idea and I went with it. And that's kind of like some of the things that you have to do with weather. You just, you know, there's no really right way of doing stuff. It's just what makes it look good and what you like. Okay. Lighter. Central. Okay. Got to pick a side here because I'm only going to want to crash on like one side. So I like how the trim is actually on this and not on the molding. That makes it nice. Because that gives you more options of it like actually peeling back after you make it hit. Like it's popped off during the impact, which is really cool. Look at more, I'm looking at more of this side like it was in the right lane. And it's going down and hit the wall. So. I'm doing this side. I have three different carriage bolts that I use for this you see that they're a little bit different this one's bigger than the other this one's more flat these are both round um, you can use other things too to bend this um, I'm actually gonna, gonna grab these might be cutting a little bit off here and there but the HVAC tape will come after the bends. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to make a hard impact on the front here. It's going to go up into the fender well. I'll probably cut out the fender well and bend that back or something like that. Um, and then it's just going to kind of calm down this side. So is how I'm doing that. Now, when you're doing the lighter, you're gonna watch where you aim your flame because like here, you don't wanna take the door handle off. So don't have it this way, you know. Try to crease this. I would suggest go this way. Cause then if, if you go up, then you're worried about this here and melting and sagging you don't want to deal with that either so i'm just trying to heat this up right here put 
push this in. All right, got a nice, nice little dent right there. We're going to continue going back. Just do a little small sections at a time. You know, you don't have to do like a whole panel because I mean, if you think about it, you know, unless you're trying to put like a, like it scraped on something, then you want to do, you know, a decent sized piece at the same time. So you can get that, so you can get that side and just roll it down this to crease it. But that's not what I'm doing here. That's, I'm, that's on a, that's something else. I'm trying to just make this whole side look smashed up and it's going to be hard impact in the front. So I want it to look like it went down, hit the wall and it just like laid, laid up against the wall and just, just rolled down the wall for a while. So I'm just worried about just making this look like just complete hell. So I'm going to keep going here. Okay, so when you get to this point, you don't want to lose your door creases here, like where your door opens at. I'm trying not to make it, I don't want to have to open the door. I just, I just don't want to have to deal with that because then, you know, you're taking this and you're opening it up and making like the, I can't think of the damn name of the inside of the door frame you know you don't want to have to start making that and stuff I mean, unless you do then you want to cut out your door and then bend your door separately but then you're getting up into the window and i just I, no i ain't doing it so keep going here I always want to watch where you point your flame at so you're not heating up parts that you don't want to have to fix. That's very important when you're doing this because then you start to start to melt everything and then nothing will look right. You just, you don't want that to happen. That's why you're doing small areas at a time when you're doing this. So you don't make that mistake. <clears throat> Alright. That's where I'm at right now. So now I'm going to do the hard impact. But I know I'm going to end up cutting some of that off. But I'll do that after I heat it up because that's where it's going to be crunched the most and it's just going to come down the side. So here we go. In the front here, I'm not really too worried about body lines because of the fact that it's going to be crunched. Let's see how I bent that there. I didn't even use anything. Trying to get it as close as I can up to that door without actually messing with the door quite yet. So I'm going to keep on going on this. That's looking pretty good. All right. So there's that. Not done. Far from done. I'm going to work on that part now. Get that to kind of cave in a little bit. 
a big one here. So there's the side. All right. Um, still far from done. Cause you can see a lot where like the plastic is melted and like how it, where it's melted is kind of like roundish and you don't, you know, it's like, it's not flowing right. Okay. And that's, that's what I'm talking about, about like, if you're just melting plastic, it just does not look, it just looks like melted plastic and that's not what I'm trying to do here. So, start uh, messing with a little bit more here and uh, see if I can get this, cause see, I, I completely ruined the wheel wall shape right there, but that's fine. Cause I think I'm going to cut some of this out. Probably cut a little bit of that out, put the tape over it and then start making it creased, which you'll see it'll look, it'll look a lot better. Dribble tool, that bit right there. So you got that little bend out of there. <clears throat> so now I'm taking uh, the knife and trying to get what I can of my door jam back here since I melted it. I don't know if you can really see that in there. It's better though, a lot better than what it was. Take a thousand grit sanding pad. Try and sand off a little bit of the uh, shininess here because it's mainly like when you melt the plastic, it wants to become like a really slick surface and the tape doesn't want to bond to it or nothing wants to really bond to it after you melt it so so i just know from like experience my little areas of concern on this are going to be up in here and probably in here just doesn't look right okay even when i get the tape on there like it's not going to fold right in those areas just because of the way the plastic melted um maybe right in there too that's probably gonna be all right so i'm going to use a dremel bit this one and lightly grind on those areas and get them down so you don't have that like melted crease in there and then this was you can tell that was like bent up and folded as I was like pushing the fender back so I want to get rid of that um, that just looks like something laid on there when it was heated I don't want that look maybe a little bit in here too That's done. Take care of that. The little crease up on the front. The crease there is gone. I did a little bit more in here. Just, I mean, you're not going to see that by the time I get the HVAC on there. Took care of that crease. 
I'm looking at the back, like I might not even put HVAC on the back. I might just get rid of this like uh, melted line right here. And that's just by sanding that down. Um, okay, sand that down there too. All right, sanding that down. Back in there, sanding that down a little bit in there. Um, I think it's time for the HVAC. Next, I'm going to start doing the HVAC tape. When you're doing this now and you're putting this on there, you got to keep in mind your the lines of the doors there. You might have to try and cut some of it out. I'm going to try and lay it on there and get it. Well, I don't know. We're just going to see what happens. All right. Start with the front fender first here. Remember, every time that you use this, you want to scratch off some of the shininess so the paint sticks. I think it's going to be best to, for me to start from the top down on this. I'm trying to just lay this on there right now and just I'm not trying to really push it in because this stuff will like it's very tacky very sticky so i'm just trying to form it in there I'm trying to get some of the creases you know oh they're pretty good so i mean see how it's looking right now So now I'm really starting to like really pushing it because I'm liking how that's looking. So now I'm really starting to push it. And once you start to really push it in, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to get it off. So you got to keep that in mind when you're doing this. I mean, I, I you, you can, if you want to get it back off, what you would do after you've done push it in so far and it's, it feels like you're like ripping the plastic. <clears throat> take a hair dryer heat it up and the glue will come come off a lot easier that way i'm liking the way that's looking so i'm going to go with that so now i'm going to cut it out All right, so now that's cut out, um, I try to leave some so I can kind of like bend it back over, okay? Uh, just the way I like to do that. See, now that to me looks more convincing than melted plastic. <clears throat> and when you paint it and you start to lightly sand it off, you'll, you'll start to get some like metal back through and well, the, the metal will be obviously the HVAC tape. You'll start to see it come back through and that even looks way better. So, and I'm going to paint this, obviously you see it in the thumbnail before the video. Um, show you what that looks like but yeah now i'm going to move on to the door here and see what i can do with that okay so what i think i'm going to do with this so the top of this body line here is where I'm going to start it. I'm going to have to cut out a little notch like right here underneath the tape or around that corner. And then I'm going to start to fold it down. So see how this goes here. Now see, I don't want it butting up all the way to the... Um, 
to where the door opens right there. So I'm going to cut some of this off. So I'm just trying to, I don't really, I just eyeball everything basically. It, I don't really use rulers and all that unless I'm cutting like a straight line. Then I'll, that's the only time I'll really like use a ruler or anything like that. But this looks like it's going to work pretty good. I'm also going to use a Dremel tool on this, and you will see why. So that looks, that looks good. It's going to go on there just like that. <clears throat> Don't forget to <coughs> scratch the HVAC tape. So just because it's at the top right there, all right, so now like, you know, when you when you paint it, you're gonna know that you're gonna see that line, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and cut around where it starts to like curve up from the dents. So now the only parts that you are seeing on this are like, how can I explain it? Uh, the the HVAC tape, what you're seeing is like in the creases. So I'm going to, have to go cut all that out. And I think I'm going to use a uh, Dremel bit on that. No, I'm going to use an exacto knife. I'm going, to, I'm going to start with that. Now, I know, like, when I paint this, a lot of this is going to, uh, you're gonna be able to see the lines like right now. And it's different ways of handling that. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it right now, but <clears throat> it'll all come together here at the end. So just watch the video. So I've sat here and thought about this for a little bit and I thought, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit up the primer right now. So, that's basically because you see where the tape is right here. Okay. I want to see how noticeable it is and what... I just feel like if I primed it and I have it all one color, then I can more focus on like what I would what I think I want to do up in here. And I kind of got an idea right now, but I got to let this dry overnight because I need it. I don't want it tacky. So, or at least for a few hours. I don't know. See how... Yeah, maybe if I stick in the food dehydrator, it'll work better. So I, I think we're going to do that. Just get it to the point where I can handle it and then see what I can do. So it's out of the food dehydrator. It's only been like two hours, not even that. So I think I'm going to do now. Now you see like where the tape is. You see the lines of the tape everywhere. All right. I think what I'm gonna do is uh. I'm going to use a Dremel tool. Start grinding some of that off. And then spray that side again. See how that looks. So that's after I used that Dremel bit. Whew. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a primer again. I'm gonna spray another little coat of primer on it. Let's see what it looks like after that. So what I'm trying to do is get now the lines off of the tape, like where you see where the tapes actually see the tape on there. So you get those definitive lines out of there, and then um, just take out some of the creases and folds that doesn't look normal and you can grind it out with the dremel tool and all that stuff and just just make it look better here's a couple hours later and i've already taken it back out and grinded a little bit more off there front's looking good still don't know what the color i'm going to paint this but I'm just trying to get the get all this done first. It's coming along pretty good. So that's what it looks like after um, another coat of primer. I think I am now ready for paint. So I did the salting technique on here, and I've made another video here just recently on how I do this. So and now I'm just basically going to take the, get the salt off with uh, my fingers and probably a toothbrush here. So get to that and uh, see how it turned out. So here is the result after getting the salt off and now it's still wet there obviously I'm going to use probably 1000 to 1200 grit and just wet sand some areas that I want to come through more here and um All right, so I've wet sanded a lot of this. And now you see the wet sanded actually through the primer in some areas, but that's fine because I will add liquid rust to it later. So what I'm now trying to do with this side, so this is where the, all the HVAC tape is. Th this part here I'm not worried about because there's no HVAC tape here in the back corner. So I'm still gonna use the 1,000 grid and kind of still lightly sand this off here. I don't wanna get too crazy with this part. You get into here. You know, if, if you go across it real heavy, you're gonna expose a lot of that the HVAC tape again. So what I'm trying to do is not do that, obviously. So I'm just taking a 1500 here and all the areas that it's, it's fine if, if the HVAC tape comes back through because you're still going to add, I'm still going to add liquid rust on this. So it's not going to be like, it's just basically going to create more work if you don't if you try to bring less through, you know what I mean? So, like I got heavy tape right there. That's fine, because I'll put a lot of rust over there. All right. Far from done, okay? So don't stop watching the video. You got to continue watching it, okay? Don't give up on me now. Now I think what I'm going to do, so I can do with everything, Vallejo, Mata Wash.
right, so now it's all done with the model wash. Kind of a little darker, a little dirtier looking. So now I'm gonna start Vallejo environment rust stuff. Use this on most of my builds. Start doing Start doing this. It's getting there. Now I'm going to start using uh, those two. Mainly use the soot, a little bit of that rust in there, and a lot of the orange rust. So, I'm only going to focus on this side of the car because this is what this side, you know, this is what the video is about, this crash side. So, I want to get this video done and the rest of the build will be in another video. But, yeah. So, there we go. I don't think I should have used so much... HVAC tape in the door there, but I tried to make it work more with the liquid rust and stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, fender looks pretty good. So the rest of the car will be in another video. I'm gonna stop it here, and because this is this is ba basically the focal point of this whole video is how about dent it up and use the HVAC tape, so. Um, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please go subscribe. Uh, hit the like button and uh, see you in the next video.